I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, features and tools in the InView editor. And today I want to talk about the uh, ambient light and fog settings for 3D rooms. Uh, this example here is a room that I built a little while ago. And uh, the attention is it's kind of a grotto. It's underground. It's supposed to be kind of dark and mysterious. And at the moment, it kind of looks like a shopping mall or a, like a supermarket. The light's really, really bright. And uh, one of the things you might notice is that when I was building it, the color that I used for the walls is all pretty much the same. It's very monochromatic, so there's really just kind of the blue of the water and the orange of the, of the, the rock work. And the reason I did that was I knew that I would be able to bring a lot of mood into this environment using some of the other settings in the editor, so I really didn't worry too much about the fact that the walls are, for all intents and purposes, the same color. The other advantage to doing it like this is that I have a lot of different textures that are eventually going to have to be in the same space and look like they belong to each other. So this rock here on the ground needs to look like it was carved out of the same surface that the rocks on the side were and this sort of stalactites and stalagmites. Uh, that all needed to look like it belonged in the same space. But I'm going to show you how to use uh, the ambient light and the fog settings to change this environment, make it much more dramatic, uh, without necessarily having to have a lot of that drama be inside of the model itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is right now I'm in full screen mode. I'm going to click this icon and open up the, uh, the editor. And I'm going to be working in the config tab, the one on the far left. And I'm mainly going to be working with the uh, room fog and lighting parameters. And this is going to allow me to turn my very actually kind of boring color palette into something a little bit more dynamic. You'll notice over here, first we're going to work on ambient light. Ambient light is the, uh, the way, it, the colors that you pick or the values that you pick that affect what the environment um, looks like, how light it is and what color the lights are in it. So at the moment you'll see that I have it set to, the, to bright white, which is actually creating this sort of very, very blown out white room. You might see that in some of the, sh the shadow areas, I've actually painted in shadows with vertex uh, color, but mostly the room is pretty flat. So if I drag these sliders all the way to the left, I will uh, make the red, green, and blue colors just completely dark or black. So I'm set to zero, and I click Apply Changes. It gets really, really dark in here, much more dramatic. And one of the things that you can see that you couldn't see before was that I built into this model a, a 3D light, which is hovering around the, the water. I wanted there to be the feeling that this sort of eerie glow was coming up from uh, underneath the, the surface of the water. And you can see on the avatar that the light is affecting one, only one side of him from the center. And if I was on the other side of the pool, it would be affecting the other side. This is really nice and kind of mysterious, but it really isn't very good at giving you an idea of what the avatar looks like. So if the avatar was wearing an outfit you wanted people to see, it'd be kind of hard to see it. And also there's some strange stuff that's going on. It's not as easy to see in the male avatar, but the female avatar, you might end up with some strange areas where things are uh, trying to, to soften out geometry and you end up with a really, really hard edge. So what you do is you can, can bring up the ambient light. I'm gonna bring it up roughly to the middle here. And, uh, and click apply changes and that looks a little bit better so I'm still getting a little bit of that drama that that I was looking for and I'm still getting that sense that there's a light source over here on the right but I am also getting some fill light or some color on the left hand side and so that uh, whatever the avatar is wearing uh, it's visible um, but I'm also although I'm in the center here uh, the lighting that I'm putting here is actually a gray light which a lot of video games kind of leave it at that um, that might look good on clothing, but when it comes to skin tones, it does tend to make uh, people look a little dead or give them kind of a gray, sickly pallor. If you can take the red and just sort of nudge it up a little bit so it's sort of a pinkish gray uh, and apply changes, you actually bring in some more life into that skin color that wasn't there before. And you can play with that, play with the, the green and blue as well and try to find the best looking uh, shadow colors. But this way I get the drama that I'm looking for, but I also haven't made my avatar look like a ghoul or like he's somehow dead. I can even nudge it up a little bit more. Um, if you go a little too crazy, then you end up with everything being kind of like a, like a, like a bar or maybe he's in hell. Uh, so I'm going to move it back down to just be a little bit off center. 
apply the changes, and there we go. I've got my mood, but I've also got a nice uh, skin tone. So next we're going to work in the fog settings. Now, first I want to say that fog is probably not the best word we could have used because fog suggests that we just have the opportunity to add fog or not. But really, the fog settings are more like adding atmosphere or particulate in the air. It can uh, allow uh, areas down the hall of a, a spooky mansion to feel darker or more mysterious. It can uh, be colored, so it can suggest actually sunlight or or like an autumn uh, nice sunset. So fog is, is what we call it, but really it's much more about changing the atmosphere of, of the room. So at the moment I've got the fog set to, to pure white, and if I turn the fog on and I click on apply changes, you get pretty much what you would expect. It looks like the fog's coming in, it makes it look kind of uh, mysterious and cold, and uh, this is really good if you're doing sort of London uh, or San Francisco with the fog rolling in. But um, if I take and I grab these sliders and move them all the way to black, then it, it stops looking like fog. And it starts to look like, like the light maybe isn't hitting in that corner over there. As you get further back, it gets darker. It gives a sense of volume that you, uh, you don't get without the fog. And the advantage to it is you can also change uh, the, the distance of the fog. So I could bring that fog really far in, apply changes, and really, really get dark and mysterious. So that it feels like the, the light is only shining in the area that I happen to be in at the moment. And um, this is a little extreme, so I'm going to bump it back up to, to like 50 or so. And I'm going to change the color, because at the moment I have my sort of orange rock work, and I want to find a complementary color, so I want to go kind of blue. Now I can use these sliders, but I can also type in the number. So I'm going to type in uh, 2 for the red, and I'm going to type in 30 for the green, and about 138 for uh, the blue. Apply changes. Well, now I've all of a sudden got this, this other color in the environment that kind of suggests uh, uh, that uh, some some bounce is happening with the blue of the water. Uh, it's making the corners feel more mysterious. And I can play with the distance so that maybe that is going to move in slightly. Let's see what that looks like. You know, maybe that's a little too much. But as I pull back, you can see just how rich that that blue is. It's not white like the fog coming in, and it's not all black like it's you know scary and dark. Uh, it just suggests that there's more depth happening in the environment. I'm going to move it back up a little bit, back up closer to 50. And, uh, and there you go. Uh, fog is really good for exterior um, places, like in, in valleys or where you want the mountains to look like they're off in the distance, but fog's also really good for setting the mood inside an environment. And uh, I highly recommend that you spend some time playing with it uh, on every room or environment you build. Uh, some days it's not appropriate, um, but more often than not, just by adding fog, you add just a little bit more realism and a sense of drama to your spaces that uh, wouldn't conceivably be there if you didn't. So play with your ambient light and your fog settings, and I think you'll end up with some really cool stuff.